Oh, I was walking along the road the other day and saw a man standing there. He said to me, Hey, Dangerfield, you left your wallet around my pad last night. And I said to him, I didn't. You left your pad around my wallet. How about thinking about it like that? How about thinking about it like that? How about thinking about it like that? You're listening to Chris Dangerfield's Sunday Prescription. And why I still call it the Sunday Prescription when it's any day or as it has been no day prescription it's the it's not the chris it's nothing it's nothing anymore it's fallen to pieces i've lost my momentum i had a, I had a an audience that was it was like it was rolling down listener hill growing snow ears and loving it a lot and suddenly i got lazy i couldn't be bothered to speak into the big afro head thing i've got and and i and i failed i failed you all but i'm back look i'm back no one noticed well that's not true because i've had lots of people being really nice it's really nice lots of people are emailing me on the facebook uh, coming at me like a second sense saying where is it i had it in my schedule i had it in my routine as i do with other people's podcasts and 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 then they felt as if I took it from them. What I gave with one hand, I took it with the next. And and one of the main um, protagonists in this, uh, what I don't know what we could call a, a mob, a mob. One of the main protagonists protagonists <laughs> is uh, anyway is a man called Richard Griffiths, famous from the um call center bbc3 now i know when i drop in bbc3 it makes the previous statement famous from kind of local he's famous locally around the bbc3 audience which from experience myself of being on bbc3 is made up of the people who made or were in the things on bbc3 so it's quite small but he hounds me relentlessly um tonight he said Where's the fucking podcast? And then he also said, Zamo is a locksmith. And I said, I know, because um, I own a lockpicking supplies and development company. Yes, that's right. Uh, And and all of a sudden, I've decided they sponsor this podcast. That's right. I will just run the tape. Hey, Johnny. You still playing with those chickens? That's right, John. I don't know what to do with my hands all day. I just play with chickens. Have you ever thought about picking locks like those MI5, MI6, Bodie, Cowley, and what was the other one? Bodie. Doyle. And Doyle, uh, the professionals do. No, I'd never thought of that. What should I do? You should go to www.ukbumpkeys.com where the nice director, Chris Dangerfield, of the No Day Prescription fame will help you steal (laughs) whatever you want from the planet. Um, Yeah, that is the end of this commercial break. Um, So Richard's been hassling me. I'm going to ring him up. He's just texted me, and when I said that Zamo, what what that is about, Zamo, the man who played Zamo, who died um, on heroin in the Grange Hill show from a long time ago, um, he's a locksmith now. I won't tell you his real name, but you can find it out on the Google. But anyway, he's just, I said he was a customer, and Richard Griffiths of BBC Three, locally famous fame, said, what, does he buy a smack off of you? Let's give him a call, shall we? See what he's got to say. Hear what he's got to say about all sorts of things. He can talk. Now, he is Welsh. He doesn't know I'm going to call him, but he is Welsh. And he's also spent years putting narcotics into a hole in his arm. Um, I don't think he does that anymore, for legal reasons, of course. Let's give him a call, see if he's up at 3 o'clock in the morning, Sunday night. Let's give it a go, see what he's got in him. This might not go down at all. I'll tell you about my corporate merger in a minute. He might mention it. Let's go. 
<clears throat> Good evening. Richard Griffiths? Yeah, hi. So why are you awake at three o'clock in the morning? Oh, uh, fuck knows, to be honest. Yeah, I haven't got any logical reason for that. Do you sleep? Well, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that's all right. So, um, you're on my podcast. You've been hounding me for a podcast. Am I? Yes. Is this some sort of promotional thing going on, yeah? Well, you're a guest on the show. Oh, thanks. What's the fee? The fee? How much did the call centre pay you? Uh, I can't disclose that. Okay, well, I, I guarantee I'll match whatever they gave you, yeah? Oh, thanks. No problem. So, um... Um, what's going on in your world? Um, well, I've just been called an, unge an ungodly hour by an ungodly man. Um, I'm reluctant of what I can discuss now, knowing this is potentially going to be available on some sort of public forum. All right, I'm going to get rid of you now. Right, I got rid of him. Boring, let us all down, didn't he? But he did inspire me to do the recording, and this is why. Um... <laughs> he texted me and he said, I thought you said there was going to definitely be a podcast every week. And I said, well, I'm going for a corporate merger at the moment. And um, when you're improvising, which this is, have you noticed? Have you, have you noticed I don't write it first? Have you noticed I don't write it first? Have you noticed that I don't write it first? Have you noticed? Have you noticed that I don't write it first? What would you do if the grass was blue? Do you like Tony Blair's eyes? So the problem with improvising is that you talk about stuff in your life. And if you go back to the last podcast, there's about 20 of them. They're all on YouTube now. This is on YouTube. This is the first one that's launched on YouTube. Hey, <laughs> just because it's free. Um, the problem with improvising is you one tends to talk about things in their mind. When you're going through a corporate merger and you're improvising, it's not unlikely that I'll go like this. Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, how's it going? Got some fantastic customer attention analysis software today. Wow, the stats are off the wall. So you can understand that I haven't really had... Um, can you imagine what that would be like? So I've been really involved in it. It's quite a big deal because... Obviously, I want the business to continue to succeed, sell it, retire, Southeast Asia, I love the sun, I love the ladies, sitting in the car, was a Mercedes, went in a restaurant, didn't know they were ladies, just rhyming now, but rhyming in a way that I hope somehow informs you of that delicate bit of elastic between self and other. Is your lady friend standing near you? Do you have a human to touch? Do you have a human to touch? Can you draw a spiral on your lover's back? Can you draw a spiral on your lover's back? So apart from the corporate merger, which as you can see has limited scope, and I will just fall back into saying something like this. Can you say something like that? Let's try that out. Listen, I want to try something, because this is obviously a recording, but you're at home. Give it a go now, right? I want to ask you something. Let's test the world out. Let's see what reality is really like. Um, can you say something like this? Go on. Go on. <laughs> Imagine if you've just said it. You might have done. Try it again, ready? Can you say this? Go on. <laughs> Some people have done it. And, and respect to you, there's people in their houses who've just gone for no apparent reason, well, no no, no reason, just the, the joy of uh, repetition and being told what to do. Some people have just gone, what, something like this? <laughs> I have been writing my novel, that's another thing that's taken up time. And a, a lot of time, it's, it's real work. I, start, I, I wrote the novel years ago, I've gone out to Thailand... Have you noticed how many stories I've got that start? I've gone out to Thailand. I don't even say it right. I went to Thailand and um, many times, but I went out a few years ago to get clean. And I, I stayed between a hotel that my Thai friends run and a brothel which my Thai friends run. Just sort of hanging between the two and being looked after really and being uh, really supported. It was quite lovely, you know. It was far, by far the best rehab I've ever done. 
I mean, I've done lots of rehabs. I'm well into double figures. If you put detox centres in there as well, it's probably most of my adult life been in hideous institutions looking at pasty-faced middle-aged women going, can you tell the group how you feel? Can you? And and that sort of nonsense. And and sitting out in those, um, sitting out in the brothel was amazing and watching all the customers come and go and all the girls, you know, great fun they were, hilarious. I remember saying to them once, we are all sitting around after a day's work, I had, and I'd just been sitting there sweating, obviously. One of them, hang on, hang on, one at a time, one at a time. Uh, we are sitting there after a day's work and I said to them, do you know about the Norwegian model? And they, they no, they, what, 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 Unicus Cascanavica, <laughs> you know, the Norwegian model. I said, well, the Norwegian model about prostitution is they, they criminalise the punter. And that was language, obviously, these lousy uh, women. Oh, careful. What I mean, of course, is they come from Lao. That's right. They, they actually don't. They come from Isan in the north of Thailand, but they speak Lao. So you can call them these lousy women. Of course, uh, being sex workers, they are some of the most amazing women on the planet. Incredible lives, incredible strength and, and determination to do well in very, very desperate circumstances. That they, um, I explained to them about this criminalising the punter. I said, basically, if they came around here and saw people coming in here for uh, massages and that, they would arrest them and deter them from coming again. And your business and your trade and your work and your bread uh, is going to um, go. And in, in, in Thai culture and in Southeast Asia, I, I don't know as a whole, I don't know about Laos, Vietnam, but certainly Cambodia and Thailand, uh, North and South, um, East and West, and Central and Perimeter and Periphery and Core, uh, the the eldest girl is kind of responsible for the the finances of the family. I think I've said that before. I've certainly been writing about it in my novel anyway. And you know they they tend to have big families uh, back in Isan and Northern Thailand. Um, uh, you know, thirty to a steel corrugated steel hut. Uh, you know, really really basic life. And 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 they they fund these lives. They fund their families. They fund the villages. They go back there. They cover all their tattoos up. They pretend to be good Buddhist girls. Everyone knows what's going on. But it's like, well, we don't talk about it. It's fine. And I explained that to them, and they were they, they were just shocked. They were absolutely shocked. They, they they asked. It's quite interesting because they don't know this discourse. They don't engage with it because they're busy and they've got real lives and real problems and real struggles. They're not some ludicrous middle class nonsense, crazy new feminist male or female who's got this mad nonsense that we live in a rape culture. We don't. We 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 put rapists in prison. A rape culture is in like the Democratic Republic of Congo. They don't need telling, of course, because they fucking live it. You ridiculous cunts. Um, and, and all this patriarchy business, and I have to explain to these women that they're like, well, why, why do they want to uh, do this? Why? And they do. There are missions. These, these, these uh, new feminists. They get together and they, they put up their little ponce button on their website. Uh, oh, look, someone, someone extended his male white supremacist uh, pr- privilege all over me in the street the other day by looking at me for longer than a second. The bastard. Uh, if you'd like to give me some money so I can eat some fucking ice cream. And, uh, um, yeah, they, they, they don't engage with all that. So they, they get these missions together where they go out to Southeast Asia, uh, like a load that went to Cambodia. And, um, they, they got all these street workers together and said, look, you don't need to sell your bodies. We've got a, a, a decent professions for you. And all these girls, imagine these teenage girls on the whole, or, uh, in their twenties occasionally and older than that, rarely and younger than that, of course. But I don't know about that. I haven't, re- I haven't seen that in all my time out in Southeast Asia. I haven't come across any of that. I'm sure it's there. I've been told by people there. However, never actually seen it, so I can't comment on it. But these um, these girls were, were amazed. They thought this is amazing. These these clever, rich, white, middle class Europeans have saved us. And of course, they chucked them in a fucking basement somewhere with a sewing machine, and were told to knock up loads of Primark fucking boob tubes or whatever it is for uh, Swansea slags. I've noticed down there to wear. And uh, I think they lasted about a day before they were like, "Hang on, I'm earning like twenty pence." A year sewing these clothes together in these hideous conditions in gorgeous boiling hot Cambodia, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm in this lightless little den, and um, I'm not making any money. I could go back to sex work and be making five hundred pound a day, maybe turning two or three tricks of an evening and making twice, three times that. These girls earn a lot of money doing that work, and it's a what a what a terrible work it is. They're out partying, they're out drinking. Most of the blokes uh, don't even have sex with these girls. Believe me, I've been there, I've seen it. Uh, they, they 
they just want the company. I've, I've, I've seen girls come back into my friend's brothel complaining that the punter didn't want to fuck and she's going, oh man, I was crazy horny all night long and he was like, no, I just want you to have a nice time. I've got a daughter your age and all this kind of nonsense. So far from the narrative they like to tell you about these trafficked women that are, you know, chained to fucking radiators and full of heroin. Jesus Christ. i never seen anything like that. I, I, I've heard that trafficking is very popular in marriage, however, but you don't see much going on about that because it doesn't have the, the glamour and the interest and it doesn't have that sort of intensity that draws people to it. It doesn't have that sexual interest which always gets people going. So... Um, yeah, and the, the the thing is, these girls ask the very basic questions that need asking, and 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 raise very awkward realities. Uh, this one girl called Noi, incredible girl. Every morning when I see Noi, she'd she'd be she liked to suck these pips. I don't even know what fruit they're from, but they're about an inch round this pip and she just would suck on it. And every morning when when I'd see her, she'd just sort of stick it on the end of her tongue. And then roll her eyes back, and Jesus Christ, every morning I go, no, please, it's fucking eight o'clock. And then she'd just sort of give me a little slap round the head and call me silly English man. Um, uh, and Noy said to me, she said, but I don't understand why, why, why do they want to tell us how to live our lives? And that, you know, that's the question. She she didn't say that like some sort of argument. Said, why? Who are these women want to tell us what to do? She was asking me why. Why do they? What what makes them want to tell us to live our lives? And I had to answer her. And it's kind of weird when you're talking to an 18-year-old girl sex worker who's worked the streets in Bangkok since she was very young, uh, works in that industry in a hellhole like Patong, which I say hellhole, I mean it in a nice way because I love that. It's, it is the end of the world, Patong. Patong is a big orgy where you, you, you sort of cat, you make eye contact with someone during the orgy and you say... What are you doing later? You know, I've nicked that off with John Baldrill, but Patong is exactly like that. It's like the end of the world. It's the end of the this cycle of the American empire. It's that decadent phase where you're just grabbing hold of anything. And Patong is that, as is the whole world. But Patong, uh, Pattaya, Bangkok, places like that, they don't pretend. They don't. They don't decorate it. They don't. They don't make it look otherwise, just to make us feel like life's all right. This is what it is. People pay for sex. People take drugs. Uh, people do good things. People do bad things. That's how the world's always been. It carries on there. And uh, you can imagine Noi and the life she's had and the family she looks after and, uh, and the things she has to do and, the, and the, the, the amazing strength of the woman. And she literally is, uh, I'm like, they think they're cleverer than you and know what's best for you. And she's like, no, I like this job. She, and if they take the customers away, how am I going to make any money? I said, well, sewing clothes. <laughs> She's just like, fuck off. I'm like, of course. Why? Why would you want that to happen? It's insane. Who are these people talking for these people? I've got a friend in England, right? Um, uh, a Chinese woman. Listen to this story. She come from Fujian, um, which I think is just sort of central south um, China, a place called Fujian. And uh, I never knew it even existed until I met a lovely woman. And... Um, she got smuggled out of China by the Hong family. The Hong family are what we know popularly as the triads. When she was, I think, 24, 25, 24, 25, she left a child, a daughter, with her parents in Fujian. And she got smuggled out into Hong Kong. From Hong Kong, she took a flight, I think, to be honest with you, I've been making it up somewhere in Europe. might have been somewhere sort of Soviet sort of style. Oh, show me age, Soviet. It was the old Soviet block, you know, the one. Uh, and then finally in France. In France, she was given a Korean passport because they all look the same. They all look the same. Oh, hang on, little little break. I was walking through Chinatown the other day. There was these two German parents, and they 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 looked like they dressed. They'd gone into a shop and said, "We're going to England as German tourists. Have you got the outfits?" He had his white socks up to under his knee, in the sandals, little khaki cargo shorts, the full bit, camera around his neck. Wife there grinning, looked like a bloke with a wig on. Pair of them, and they got three daughters. All German, <laughs> didn't need saying. And the mum and dad are like got the cameras and they're pointing them at these kids. And the kids are in front of that big ornate uh, Chinese sort of entrance thing in Gerard Street. And the, the old man's sort of going, Gis Weissen, Gis Vargas, Verden. And they look at the kids and go, But get him, him far to him, Serbegorten. But the kids are all pulling their eyes at the side of their face like Chinese and sticking their front teeth out. <laughs> In Chinatown, the three of them like, oh, dang, oh, ding, dong, ding, dong, ding, dong, you love her. And the dad's going, oh, give, give one shift and this Chinese and Boston slitty-eyed bastard, huh? <laughs> Brilliant. 
and completely thrown me. Oh no, I, we're going back to my friend. And so she was given a Korean passport because they all look the ying dong, ying dong, ying dong same to the Europeans and uh, told to go to England and then pay them back because obviously these people getting them out from the, the villages of Fuji and they haven't got the sort of money needed to play the Hong family to get them around the world and a passport into England. So once she's in England, she's, she literally arrived here. She had a few friends, but she arrived here with fuck all. Literally, literally the chairman mouse suit she was no doubt wearing. Chin I Beyonce comes in high chong thing. Then, so she goes to her friends. They sort of set her up with a job in a Thai restaurant. She's Chinese. She works there for two years. She learns to speak Thai. Right? While she's there, of course, she's learning to speak England. After that, she goes to work in a Chinese restaurant. And then that's where she really brushes up her English. She can now speak Mandarin, Cantonese, Fujian, English and Thai. Five languages. Left school when she was 13 and she can speak five languages. And not str- she's not struggling. She's not there like with the old English... Kids, she's not like me. Uh, je voudrais un banane. Uh, allez, allez, le, le piscine and la bibliothèque, gracias. None of that. She's just on it. She she can just do it. Incredible. After the Chinese restaurant, she learns how to massage. She she goes and does a massage course for about three months, learns how to massage. Then she starts working in the massage shop, straight away working as a sex worker. Okay? So she come in with nothing. Now, this is ten years later. Now... She owns a semi-detached property of her own in Turnpike Lane. She owns it. Eight rooms, all en suite, that she rents out to her friends who also work in the industry. Amazing. She's naturalised. She's got an English passport and a Chinese passport. She goes back home, sees her daughter all the time, brings her daughter over here occasionally. She's putting her daughter through school in China. Through uh, university, I mean by that. Incredible. Incredible. But... There's people who are cleverer than her, who know better than her, who know that consenting sex work is actually rape. Of course it is. Or some other ludicrous bullshit. How dare these people tell other people what to do? Hmm, they talk about the, the fucking patriarch and the white privilege. Stop telling other people what to fucking do. That's what you're doing. Grr, drives me absolutely nuts. I'll tell you what, while we're on that subject, we, that's generous, isn't it? While me and you are on that subject, are you on that subject? Yes? Are you on that subject? Are you on that subject? While we're on the subject of that, have you checked out the slut walk? There's a thing called a slut walk. Sounds great, doesn't it? But (laughs) it's not that good. It really isn't. It's not what you want it to be anyway. uh, A woman in America decided to pull her jeans up her ass crack and and pull her T-shirt up a bit uh, to reveal her less than attractive breasts slightly and walk through a black working class area of New York at a time and a place where she never would usually with her ass about and to show everyone what it was like to be a woman walking around such an area dressed like that. Weirdly, didn't really, didn't, didn't really work. She sort of, you know, she's really sort of trying to strut it and like a couple of blokes go, all right, all right, well, you, you want to be careful. <laughs> you know, real backfired. But the uh, the new feminist, and that's N-U, new, because we want to look at things a new way, even though it's just the old way, but less clever and less insightful and less fucking appropriate to the time we live in. Um... They've 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 taken it on and they do slut walks and it and they 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 walk around now. There's the whole thing harbors a lie, right? The new feminists that do the slut walks they dress up in what we'd call really whore's clothes. Yeah, they put on the high heels, they put on the fishnets, they put on like the sort of push up bras, they cake their faces in makeup, and and then they do these walks. And what is the link? Because we, we sort of, we're born into this. We were born? <laughs> we, well, we were born into it, of course. But we've bought into this narrative. We've bought into this idea of um, sort of being critical by way of parody. Like I went to art college. I went to three or four fucking art colleges. And one thing you always see in um, new, by new, I mean new at college, like young female artists, they go through this phase where they just put loads of makeup on and stand around in miniskirts going, mmm, my body, hands off. Policeman hands say no. I say Bible go. Hands off my body, my mind, my love, my lesbian sisterhood, and 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 that's say what you want, but the, we've we've kind of been, we kind of been, what's the word? 
tricked. We've been duped into seeing, into not even seeing, but not being critical about this supposed critical relationship of the parody of wearing those clothes. It's got nothing to do with what they're saying. Absolutely nothing. They might as well just dress up as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Because wearing those clothes has got nothing to do with their feminism, equality, uh, empowering women at all. It's got everything to do with the exact same pleasure in attention that women who dress like that get anyway. That's all it is. That's all it is. They you you see them go onto YouTube, type in slut walk, and you see these women walking along. And in, in fairness to them, most of them are too rough to be able to pull it off. I'll give you that. <laughs> I get that. But, you know, you, if you if you have got like rolls and rolls and rolls of fat, maybe maybe a tight PVC corset isn't going to work. Because it looks a little bit like you've put an elastic band around a balloon. Now it's your choice, but don't pretend. <laughs> don't pretend it's, it's that that you're holding it up as some kind of mirror. Look how you look, you you slutty women. I mean, what what can they possibly be saying by dressing up like that? Don't let them dupe you. Ask them. It's bullshit. Absolute bullshit. It it makes no sense. I'm I'm trying to think what you know. It's like doing a, a, a an empowering man slut walk. More of that later. You can see where this is going already, can't you? And and sort of dressing up as the king and saying, well, you know, it's these rulers that that make us uh, that we're subjected to their ways and their laws, and we are just lowly plebs. We are peasants. We are proletariat. So I've dressed up as a king to... Ah, bollocks, it just feels great to put on a crown and have a, a long cloak. And everyone looks at you. I'm enjoying the attention, the same attention that the king gets when he gets dressed up like that. And that's all that dressing up is. So you can see where this is going. There's some really cool stuff out there about all this going on. It's quite funny. I mean, it's terrifying as well. I mean, it's getting so ludicrous that people are being fired from their jobs for making rape jokes it's crazy and 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 the, all these crazy old ideas about wage gaps and uh, like we, you know it's illegal to pay someone less because of their gender people don't do it they pay people for results it's that simple it's not we don't live in that world anymore oh it drives me nuts so i'm going to do a slut walk i'm going to i'm going to dress up as some something attention grabbing that's right ladies it'll probably be just me in my pants i reckon that should that should be enough, really, to get the eyes, yeah? I, I don't know what I'm going to wear, actually, but it will obviously be a, par a, a double-level parody of the Slut Walk, and I'm going to walk through Soho, and I'm going to film it. I'm going to video it. I'm hardly going to get out a film camera. 35 mil Academy Standard. Got a reflector, John, and action! Hi, I'm Chris. This is the Slut Walk, because this is my body. My body, there's no you in body, yeah? There's no I in you either, right? So don't look at my knickers, baby. And... Uh, and make some jokes and 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 hopefully enjoy myself. It's, you know what? I'm happy to say that I'm doing it because it'll be hell of a good fun. And uh, there's very little real political uh, uh, appeal to politics there. I just got fuck all else to do apart from a corporate merger. Merger. That's right. Uh, UK bump keys, lock picking specialists uh, 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 established uh, ten years ago. Um, Oh, actually, French, we're merging with a French company. It's a, um, a corporate merger. And uh, it's going to be changed to um, UK en France, bomb K. So that, that should, be, should be good. OK, uh, what we're going to do is try Richard again. See if he can, maybe, he's, he's probably got quite angry with himself for being shite. And probably sitting at home thinking, if only I could go back in time. Here he is, back in time. It's now nearly quarter to four a.m. Uh, Richard? Uh, Richard? Who's that? That's right, it's Chris Dangerfield from Chris Dangerfield's Sunday Prescription, sponsored by UK Bump Keys, uh, the Bump Keys with Le Merge. Yeah. Oh, do you do those rake keys? Rake keys, did you say? Yeah. Yes, we do. Two types of rake keys or buy the combo set for cheaper. What are you up no, to? What are you up to, Richard? The rake keys, rake key massages. 
Reiki. Do you know what? I, I met a bloke where me and you went to rehab once in Bury, St Edmunds. Did you ever yeah. meet that bloke Damien there? Um, real hippie, no, real I, hippie. Don't think so. He was he was on his parents' payroll basically, so he just walked around being a hippie, but basically just fucking people really. But he said to me, I, I injured my ankle playing football, and he said, "Do you want me to do some reiki on that?" And I said, "No, I don't believe in that stuff." He went, "Well, I don't need to. You don't need to be there for me to do it." <laughs> I'll crack on then. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'll have four hours and immediately go uh, on. Don't need to be there, but I will have to build you. Yes. Have you, have you ever had Reiki? No, I haven't. My uh, ex is, well, I was born, is it? No, my ex is sister's partner used to do it, but I think that was just because he was a bit of a dirty old perv, because he didn't do it for women. He had some spiritual reason for that. Right. Well, it's funny uh, you say that, because... I, they have to be there, though, unlike the other guy. They did definitely have to be there. I think sexual harassment, it really does need the body, doesn't it? Otherwise, it's just masturbation. Well, I don't know. The psychological thing is the worst. It's worse, apparently, isn't it, than the physical pain or torture, they, so they say. I'm, 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 what, the hospitals. I'm, what I'm feeling from you is that you have been psychologically sexually abused there, Richard. Is that is that fair to say that? Probably... Probably happening now somewhere. I just <laughs> like it, like you said. It's one of those things. I don't have to be there. There's probably somebody raping me in their dream as we speak. Yeah. And what are we going to do about that as a society? Have you, you know, this is the cause well, you've adopted. Uh, this is the one you put your energy into. I mean, this is your life, isn't it? Really. What What are you going to do for, about it? You can only let these people, you know, do what they need to do because it's just a way of sort of cleaning up their own stuff and that. So, through the night. so people such as yourself are, are like a mop, a mop for it's the... It's a victimless crime, Chris. It's a victimless crime, ah. unfortunately. Well, that's all right. Well, it's, it kind of sort, it sorts itself out, doesn't it? Well, hopefully. Okay, Richard, you've been an absolute star. Is there anything you'd like to leave uh, my listeners with? Just a few words, you know, uh, like a, what, what do they call it? Like a, a zen moment. <laughs> well, not so much a zen moment, it's just more... To criticise you really, it's this Sunday prescription, you know, in the early days, uh, you probably got a lot of Johnny come lately sort of listeners, but you know, as some of the old school will know, he used to be, well, like Piers for example, he used to be part of his drive to work, as I remember you saying. Um, you know what? I used to like the fact that it was a Sunday prescription, and uh, I used to have my little routine, match of the day, all that business, and then about one o'clock in the morning... Uh, you know the podcast would be out. so. It's not so much a Zen moment. It's just a. It's just a cry. F- it's just, it's just a, a plea to you, Chris. You know, it's a Sunday prescription for one on every Sunday, and it just seems to make sense that way. You know what? You've said some great things there. Some stuff that I'm going to have to chew on. You've put your meat in my mouth, and I'm going to chew it till I choke. Well, just more victimless crimes. Uh. <laughs> Richard, enjoy being psychologically butt fucked tonight. I wish I was there. Yeah, so don't I. <laughs> Good night, you Wally. And there you go. That was uh, the lovely Richard Griffiths. You can follow him on Twitter. That's at Utter Welsh Cunt, who looks like Jurgen Klopp. At Welsh idiot, jobless and addicted. Uh, well, I think, you know what, he's, and Piers, lovely Piers, and Piers, you see, there was a time when I would mention Piers, and all, he's right, all those things sort of fell away. Well, listen, listen, this is the start of a new wave of fucking podcast action, all right? I know this one has been shite, but I can live with that, yeah? Can you, or is your own failure in your own life finding a voice through me? Am I your failure? Ask yourself seriously. Am I your failure? Do you allow yourself to fail through me? Can you remember the world before dinosaurs? Okay, right, listen, that's me done. Um, This is on YouTube, obviously you're watching it. Share the link, make some fucking effort. I put in a lot of effort to not do this every week. (laughs) And, And you should too. Uh, be nice to yourselves, be nice to people you like, and ignore the people you don't. Don't make any effort, just ignore them, fuck them. See you later. Much later.